Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today we're going to be going over the Elemental Shaman PvP talents. Um, the nice part about the Shaman in Dragonflight is that there are a lot of options you can take. Primarily in the Shaman tree, but there are some choices that you can make in the Elemental tree as well. That will be viable in competitive PvP. So, let's go ahead and start with the Shaman tree since this is going to be probably the longest part of the discussion. So the, the shaman tree has so much utility that you can take. So like you got hex, purge, you got self healing and like earth shield, which you could get like double shield. You got thunderstorm, lasso, potomac recall, cap totem, earth. You got so much utility here that you could take. So it heavily depends on the fight that you're going to be in. Um, also the content that you're going to be doing. So are you doing like rated RPGs? Are you going to be doing 3v3? Are you going to be doing 2v2? So it's going to be very variable, but that's the good part is that it's not too, like, you're, you're not forced to take anything. You can take basically whatever you want, whatever your play style is. And this is the build that I like to run and I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you s some other builds that I may be running when the season one hits. So this build is really nice because I get some extra defensives through Astral Shift and my Spirit Wolf. Um, this this build is primarily for Battlegrounds right now, but I'm gonna be alternate. I'm gonna be changing it around for Season One for Arena. So like Cap Totem, uh, the Guardian's Cudgel kind of it drops the second totem after the first one's gone. So this is really nice. It gives you a longer stun. Earth Shield with this Elemental Orbit gives you an, another shield, so that way you can have Lightning and Earth Shield. And then I also run Surging Shield, which gives me some extra passive males from Generation, which is very good for like melee cleaves. And my healing is increased by my Earth Shield, which is paired very well with this Focused Insight, which I never see anyone take, which I'm kind of surprised by, because every time you cast a Flame Shock, it reduces the mana cost of your next heal and increases its healing by 30%, paired with your your earth shield healing is going to be very very good um <clears throat> i like to run gust of wind i like to run totemic recall primarily for grounding totems so there's a lot of very strong casters right now shadow priest aflock demo lock <laughs> every lock but grounding totem is very very strong so i like to run that I like to run lasso. You, so you'll also notice that I'm running a lot of DR stuff. So like cap totem, lasso, and um, my earth elemental stuns. We'll get, we'll get to that part over here in a while. But the, the main reason I'm running it like that at the moment is because I do a lot of battlegrounds. So I think this is gonna be one thing I might change around would be like maybe um, I won't run primal elementalist over here for the stun and stuff. And maybe I'll change around Cap Totem for maybe like Earth Grab. But we'll get to this side of the tree in a second. So one other thing that I'm really looking at changing up is Spirit Walker's Grace. So I want to get this, but not actually because of Spirit Walker's Grace. I want to get it because of this. Um, you become immune to silence and interrupt effects for five seconds. And if you pair that up with the PvP talent Precognition, where if you juke a kick, you get basically like a mini haste and you become immune to interrupt effects, you can get a lot of uptime on immunity for, you know, some strong casting, but it's not as strong as you might think because the only really, the only times you're really going to be casting is if you don't have any Lava Surge procs, which is going to be few and far between, or for your Ice Fury. This is going to be probably the main thing that you're going to be getting kicked on. <clears throat> but, um... So Earth Grab Totem might be something I want to grab, maybe some extra... Hex cooldown reduction, maybe even a nature swiftness, but that's about it. So those are the possible options for the main shaman tree. Let's go ahead and dive into the elemental tree. Um, this build right here that I have right now is super fun. Uh, it's very fun because this whole side of the tree with the primordial wave and the primordial surge, you get tons of lava surge procs on every 30 seconds or 45 seconds. And um, it, it also has its cooldown reduced, so it's about 30 seconds based off how many lava surges you use. You get some extra damage from overloads, you get your primal elementals, which um, you also get Skybreaker, so it gives your flame shock a much higher crit chance 
which at the beginning of the expansion is very important because as you notice down here I only have 12% crit so 50% plus 12% 62% gives my flame shock a very very good chance to crit even at the beginning of the expansion and so I'm gonna be popping out a lot more fire elementals and also deeply rooted elements when you're when your deeply rooted elements procs, it also spews lava bursts out at every target. So the reason I really like this right now in Battlegrounds is because you'll have tons of flame shocks out. And when you use Primordial Wave, you get a whole splurge of lava surges and like lava bursts procking and thrown out. And then if this procs, then you get another wave of those going out. And then this is getting its cooldown reduced because so many lava surges and lava bursts are going out. It's pretty fucking nuts, and I'm, I got a lot of videos that I'm putting up showcasing this in Battlegrounds, and it's so fun. It's the main reason I wanted to go back to Elemental Shaman. Um, after discovering this out myself, I kind of was just playing around. I was like, you know, I want to do like an like a instant cast build because everything else just sucks in PvP. If you try to do this build, the lightning build in PvP, you're going to have <laughs> like zero fun. Because you're going to just get kicked non-stop in nature school, and that's where all your damage is. And you're just not going to be able to do anything. So this gives you some strong opportunity to actually play. Now, this being said, there are some changes you can make in this tree that are viable in PvP. And I can see actually becoming dominant in PvP, especially Arena. So a few changes I, I could make, which I have a few talent tree loadouts already made for these would be like maybe going into mountains will fall for more earth shock uh, procs um, swapping out sky breakers for wind speakers but if you do that I would get rid of primordial surge and go splittered elements because if you have lava s primordial surge procking lava surges every three seconds it's going to diminish the effect of wind speaker so you're not really going to want to run that um, I could see some Ascendance builds coming into play down this tree, maybe. Um, but the main one that I think I'm going to be seeing more of would be going down this tree, getting Stormkeeper, so that way you have some extra Lightning Bolt damage, and you can have a huge amount of Primed Ready Burst. So when your team is ready for, like, a go, you'll have, like, two Stormkeepers ready, you'll have maybe two Flame Shocks out, your Primordial Wave ready, and so you'll use your primordial wave with your flux melting, which your frost shock will increase its damage. And then you're just gonna use all your lava bursts and your storm keeper, and that's gonna be like insane fucking burst. So you're gonna be able to get out tons of damage. Um, one other thing note mentioning here is that you want to take surge of power. Surge of power gives you a lot of utility. <clears throat> so. When you use um, Urshock, or the other two, which you're not really going to be using, Elemental Bla I'll get to Elemental Blast in a second, but... So when you use Urshock, you can root people with Frost Shock, so that's going to be very strong in melee cleaves. Um, or trying to like keep the healer rooted down so you can CC him with like a Hex or something. I'll do that every now and then, I'll, like, I'll root him first and then I'll Hex him so that way he can't like line of sight me. Um, but also the flame shock spread so you can also hit another target with flame shock when you use it So again strong for like melee cleaves um, But the main thing it's going to be doing is probably your lava burst it's going to be reducing the cooldown on your elementals So that way you're going to be using your elementals more you're going to be using your meteor more Maybe your earth ele elemental stun, you know if you're being focused so like you first um, enter enter the arena you see like a cup like a rogue maybe a feral druid you're probably going to be the focus so maybe you start off with your earth elemental out you stun one then maybe you lasso like the other whatever so there's a there's a few choices there um <clears throat> but this flux melt melting talent is also very important because it your frost shock will increase the damage of your next lava burst so this will just passively through Ice Fury, as you use your Ice Fury Frost Shocks for damage and Maelstrom, you're going to be increasing your Lava Surge damage. Um, so the reason I don't take Elemental Blast is because, one, it has a cast time. So it's a two second cast time, which is longer, than, well, it's the same as my Lightning Bolt, unless I took the talent. 
Um, but it does a lot of damage, but you have to cast it. But not only do you have to cast it, but if you get silenced while casting Elemental Blast, you get locked out of every single school. You get lo locked out of nature, fire, frost, and you're just a sitting duck for however long you got silenced for. And so I really, really don't recommend taking Elemental Blast, as tempting as it is for the damage, unless for some reason you can expect not to be focused then you know you could maybe play around with it in some battlegrounds and stuff that that might be fun but i just highly recommend not taking it there's there, so many classes especially the casters are just gonna be line of sighting you the the melees are just gonna be interrupting you and silencing you it's just it's never you're never gonna be able to use it unless you take spirit walker's grace with spirit walker's aegis or you manage to get a precog but like why would you want to spend all that time juking and using cooldowns just to use your main maelstrom spender when one you could just use your earth shocks for utility so with surge of power instead of just trying to spend my maelstrom for damage i can now spend my maelstrom for damage and utility <clears throat> because you're going to be able to get out a lot more earth shocks because it also costs less 50 maelstrom versus 75 maelstrom and so you'll be able to get a lot more utility out of that as well. So, now you might be thinking, well, what ro what's the rotation we want to do? Well, let's go ahead and fly on down with our new dragon riding system to the training dummies. And in case you don't know where the PvP vendors are, they're right down here. Okay. And here's all the training dummies. So we'll just take normal training dummy right here so your burst rotation you want to use your fire elemental get him going i usually try to get an ice fury out first and use a frost shock to get flux melting and the reason you want earth elemental out or your fire elemental out first is so when you use your fl your flame shock it lasts twice as long okay i'm going to use another frost shock here to get my flux melting going so you want to now use Primordial Wave. You already have Flux Melting ready, so it's already primed. Then you want to use Sky Fury, and then you want to use your Lava Burst with your Meteor. Which I don't know why my Meteor didn't hit. He must have just despawned as soon as I used it. <laughs> but now you can Earth Shock and say the target's trying to run away because he's almost dead. Well, look, now we can just freeze him. And now we can do a little bit more damage, and maybe we Earth Shock again. We can freeze him again, because you can DR it. Um, and then if he just continues to run away, look, my Primordial Wave is almost up, and I wasn't even using any Lava Burst. Like, that's how fast it comes out. Very fast. Or maybe I use Earth Shock, and then I come over, you know, maybe the two guys over here, the melee cleaves over here. I just got two Flame Shocks going out. Now I get way more Lava Surges going. So there's a lot of utility in this tree. There's a lot of instant cast, a lot of damage. There's a little bit of RNG with the deeply rooted elements, but I think that's more for fun. <laughs> and the shaman tree just has tons of utility. This is gonna take some work trying to figure out if there's like a best overall build, but this is the build I really like to run. I'll, obviously melee cleaves, you're probably not gonna wanna run maybe totemic recall and call of the elements like maybe down this side more. And maybe try to spec into more like graceful uh, spirit walkers grace and stuff like that. Maybe um, maybe earth grab. Maybe more over on this side of the tree. But so for your PvP talents, shamans have <laughs> elemental has one huge design flaw, and that's your flame shot getting dispelled. There's nothing more triggering in this world than flame shot getting dispelled when it's already got a cooldown. Luckily, we do have the talent right here, Flames of the Cauldron, which reduces flame shot cooldown by one and a half seconds, but it's still not enough. So we need control of lava, which will make our flame shot actually tick faster. But also if it's dispelled, it does 19,000 damage, obviously scaling up with your gear. <clears throat> I'm not in my 411 PvP gear right now, and it also, also I'd have to be in like a battleground or something to show how much damage it does, but it'll knock them in the air and do, do, do a ton of damage. 
Naruto. This is like almost a necessity. In Sky Fury Totem, I like to run this just for a little bit of extra damage. Um, this one I feel like is the one I would want to swap out if I take any. Unless it's a melee cleave. If it's a melee cleave, I'm going to swap out Grounding Totem. But Grounding Totem, very important to have. <clears throat> just like overall. So, if I were to swap out any talents, I would swap out these two. I would swap out Grounding Totem me Melee Cleaves and probably take maybe Precognition because you get a shitload of haste and you become immune to control and interrupt effects if you manage to juke them properly. So that would be a good one to take. Counter Strike Totem would be a very good one to take as well. The only problem with that is a lot of people look out for it now, so maybe in like lower brackets it'd be easier to pull off and to actually have it do damage. But most people at higher ratings are just going to instantly get rid of it. Um, but it it could be a very good stop for bursts. So it could stop them just long enough for you guys to maybe get some control over them and like maybe throw down an earth grab and try to get away or something. Another good one would be Swelling Waves because we already have a lot of healing stuff on this side of the tree here. <laughs> and so healing and getting 50% additional healing over after three seconds would be pretty good and I really wouldn't recommend spectral recovery but I could see this making some niche uses with either spirit wolf or thunderous paws but overall I feel like that's a less valued um, a less valued uh, talent and also maybe static field totem but since you're ranged I feel like this is also less valued this could be good in melee cleave though, to again, instead of like maybe counter strike, you can like root them all in place, but again it's got the same problem as counter strike, you can just kill it, and then you'll be free. That's the sad part about being a shaman of your utility, is that most of your stuff can just be deleted. But other than that, I think that's everything guys, so let me know what you think about my choices of talents, let me know if you guys feel like you have something better. Or if there's anything that I should change around. And check out some of the PvP videos I'll have coming out. And then you get to see it in action. Till then. Later guys.